In every one of us is a poor person. There's still a poor person inside me. There's also a middle class person, and the middle class person wants security. They want that steady paycheck. And there's a rich person. They're all inside of us, except that it's not taught. It, you're taught to go to school, get a job, and get a paycheck. You're not taught to how to get rich. Disturbed me that my own government would lie to me. I knew we were being lied to as a people. Why would you save money when they're printing trillions of dollars? Why would you invest in the stock market for the long term when you have HFT, high frequency trading, and the Dow is at 18,000? So the most obsolete idea is go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, get out of debt, and invest for the long term in the stock market. The gap between the 1% and the 99% is massive. You see, it's not just money. You have to step back and look at the bigger picture. Too many people look at, well, what's, it, what's going to happen to me? When you look at the big picture, you're also going to know that when something bad happens, something good's going to happen. But you've got to prepare for whatever is coming. My success comes from spirituality, not finance. And what most people lack is real business knowledge, like accounting, you know, like debt, like taxes. you got to know that stuff, but they don't teach it in school to anybody. Failure should inspire you to get smarter. And unfortunately, our school system says if you, if you fail, you're stupid. That is not true. We learn from our mistakes. Mistakes are opportunities to get smarter, be humble, and take a look at something. So if you fail, that's when I became an entrepreneur because I had no money. I had no money for years. You know, I didn't have a paycheck. My last paycheck, I still remember it clearly. It was one of the worst and the best days of my life. And I was in Puerto Rico. I was, in, I was working for Xerox. And my boss gave me my last, it wasn't a paycheck, it was a bonus check. I think it was about 30,000 bucks. So I got this check and I went, holy mackerel. You know what I mean? So I was excited, but I was also disturbed. And so this other guy comes up to me, his name was John. And John says to me, he says, you're going to be back. I said, why? He says, because you're going to fail. Because that's what he did. He left Xerox, failed, and he came back. And I said, look, you failed and you came back but I'm going to fail and I'm never coming back. And that's the attitude. Entrepreneurs have one thing in common. They keep going. They'll change the rules. They'll reinvent the rules. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't just take one answer. If you're an entrepreneur and you're going to be a big entrepreneur, leadership skills and communication skills are more important than a law degree. Entrepreneur is a mindset first, a skill set, and rules. When you don't have this paycheck, you get hungrier, smarter, and it's a test of your character. Will you become a crook? Will you become dishonest? Will you cheat and steal? Or will you become a better human being? So really, that's the benefit of becoming an entrepreneur, is you really find out who you are when you don't have anything. A poor person with a poor personal economy, all they're going to see is a bad economy because they don't know how to make money in any economy. And a middle class person, they have a middle class economy. You know, they, what they want is a nice house and a steady paycheck and the job and the car. And so when you take their job away to them, that's disaster. You mess with me, I'll find a way around it. Lesson number one in Rich Dad Poor Dad is the rich don't work for money. What we do instead is we create businesses as entrepreneurs. We acquire real estate. I don't want to invest in the stock market. Okay? So the reason is because as entrepreneurs, I have more control over my income, how much I make, and how much I pay in taxes. And because I'm an entrepreneur, as well as an investor mm -hmm. in real estate, I pay zero tax. So every time I make, let's say, a million dollars as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I immediately invest it in real estate, and I have a four to one step up. So I put a million dollars in real estate, I get four million from the bank. That's why I love banks. Because when you print, savers get creamed, and people who work for money get creamed. When they print, debtors get rich. You see, debt and taxes make the rich richer, and debt and taxes make the poor middle class poorer. So all the rich guys who are doctors and lawyers, they're getting creamed, and they don't know why. My doctor just yelled at me, he's happy, he says, oh, guess what, I finally made a million dollars. And so I said, yeah, well, well, how much you pay in tax? He says, 750,000 in tax. So his net was about 400,000. That's not bad. But when I make a million bucks, I keep a million bucks. And the reason is because I don't make it by working for money. See, if you work for money, you're taxed. In America today, we have, you know, even Ray Dalio of Bridgewater, 
one of the biggest hedge fund guys in America, he's saying this gap between the rich and everybody else is too wide. Well, you could have seen that back in 1972, because the moment you corrupt money, the very thing that everybody works for, saves, counts on, they were screwed anyway. And our school systems, fake money, fake teachers, fake assets, part of that same system. Government, education, Wall Street, or City of London. And it goes back to the question I have, I have always asked, why doesn't our school teach us about money? Because Wall Street won't let them. Our school systems are making our students weaker. So in school, they have these things called now trigger effects. So you can't, as a teacher, you can't say anything that might upset the student. They don't want anything that might jar their point of view. Isn't school about opening your eyes and minds to new ideas? But that's now out of the system. So everybody's got to be PC, you know, politically correct now. And it's killing us. It's killing the brains of our kids. They're going backwards. But in their minds, they're more enlightened. You know, they might be. But if I didn't have ideas that shook me, I wouldn't learn anything new. The school system will never teach you about money. The school system was designed to teach you to be an employee, which is important, or a doctor or a lawyer, a specialist, but never about money. So if you're not going to study, you're not going to practice and all that, then you should do what Wall Street tells you to do. Buy, you know, 401ks, mutual funds, ETFs and all that. But that, that's where they're fake assets, because they only make Wall Street or the city of London rich. Just watch where the cash is flowing. Follow the money. Yeah. It's not making the poor middle class rich. You know, all Wall Street in America has done is rip off the pensions, because you know, pensions are the biggest pool of money in America. And states like Kentucky, New Jersey, Illinois, California, Hawaii are going bankrupt because Wall Street went in and just sucked all the cash out of their pensions. So the school teachers like my dad, the firefighters and police officers, they have no retirement now. But, you know, unfortunately, the poor, as was in the Bible, I'm not real religious, the poor will always be amongst us because it starts up here. It's, it's in their words, you know, and the words become flesh. Again, I'm not really religious. I flunked out of Sunday school also. But when they say I can't afford it or I can't do that, they go down. They become what they say. And I made so many people, I, don't, I can't afford it. You think I made of money? My PhD daddy says, what do you think I am, made of money? I can't afford that. And my rich dad would say, that's why he's poor. Poor people say, I can't afford it. I can't do that. I don't have time. Because this is an escape. It's an escape. You know what I mean? It's easy to say, I can't afford it. Oh, I'm too tired. Oh, I can't go to the gym. You know, when you, when you could go to the gym. But no, I can't. Truth is, I'm just too lazy to go to the gym. And your rich dad used to say what instead of, I can't afford it? How can I afford it? How can I do that? You know, what would it take, or why should I do that? He says, that a question opens a mind, a statement closes the mind. See, when you say, I can't afford it, your mind shuts down, and you become what you say. You know, people say, well, money is not that important to me. Then, if money is not that important to you, money is not important to you. I mean, the, you know what I mean? I don't care about money. The money doesn't care about you. You know, it, the word does become flesh. Or I'll never be rich. Or oh, the favorite one is the rich are greedy. It's the poor that are greedy. You know, if you think about it, because to be rich, you have to give something. You know, you have to, I, I have to produce books and games and I, I purchase real estate, I provide housing, provide jobs and all that. That's why I'm rich. But greedy people produce nothing. So I remember raising my hand when I was nine years old, talking to my, ninth, my fourth grade teacher, and I said, you know, when am I going to learn about money? And she was this woman who should have retired 50 years earlier. <laughs> she was so sick and tired of kids by this time. She says, the love of money is the root of all evil. And I said, what am I in Sunday school? And I was this punky little nine-year-old kid. And she says, we don't teach money at school. I said, why not? And she couldn't answer me. And she got very flustered. She said, sit down, take your seat. And then I got curious. I said, why don't we learn about money? She says, go ask your father. He's, the, he's my boss. So my father was the head of education, PhD, all that stuff. I go home and ask him, I said, why don't we learn about money in school? 
And he looked at me and said, because the government doesn't let us teach that subject. The government tells us what we can teach and what we can't teach. And I thought that was strange. And I said, but aren't we going to school to learn about money? He says, no, your job is to get a job. I said, but you get a job to earn money. He goes, no, you're supposed to just get a job. And I went, no, 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 no. Isn't the purpose of a job to earn money? He goes, you're correct. I said, so why don't I just learn about money? I can skip the job part, you know? And he got flustered and he said, look, and my father was for Japanese, very tall, six foot four, and an imposing man, good guy. But he says, if you want to learn about money, why don't you ask your best friend's father about money? And I said, why? That's Mike. So I asked him. He says, because Mike's father is an entrepreneur. And I said, what, am, what are you? He says, I'm an employee. I'm a government employee. And I went, oh, what's the difference? He says, the difference is an entrepreneur must know about money. Or they're, they're no longer entrepreneurs. And he says, an employee doesn't have to know anything about money. Because the government will take care of them, the company will take care of them. But I took my dad's advice and I trundled over to Mike's father's office and knocked on his door and I said, hey, I'm here, nine years old, teach me about money. He says, beat it, kid, you know. And finally, through persistence, my rich dad started teaching me about money on one condition. And that condition was he would never pay me. He says, the moment I pay you, you think like an employee. He says, that's the trap. Entrepreneurs work for free. And now I'm nine years old, my head's going cracking in half. He says, you never want a paycheck. You understand that, kid? I said, okay, I got it. And he says, well, how do I make money? He says, that's what entrepreneurs figure out. So I would work for free. I'd pick up cigarette butts and get hotels and restaurants, and I would clean and do menial tasks. And as I got older, I started getting into office work and marketing and accounting. And I was an apprentice, basically. But I always worked for free. And he would teach me about money. But the way he taught me about money was playing Monopoly. And I finally, one day, I got upset. I said, well, when are you going to teach me about money? He says, what do you think we're doing? Said, we're playing Monopoly. He goes, no, 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 no. What do you think we're doing? I said, I don't know. I'm teaching you about money. There's many formulas for great success in money. There's thousands of them. But one of the best ones is found on the game of Monopoly. It still is today. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. And he says, what do you think I'm doing? And I went, I don't know. So then he took me out and he showed me his greenhouses. And 10 years later, when I was 19, I was now in school in New York, and I come back to Hawaii, and Rich Dad had bought the biggest piece of land smack dab in the middle of Waikiki Beach. And when you go to Waikiki Beach today, you'll see the Hyatt Regency Hotel. That was his hotel, just like the game of Monopoly. Acquired assets and they became bigger assets. He just kept a, 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 what's called an assemblage because that property wasn't that big at the time. So he had to buy out all the small guys. So he'd buy out this shop owner and buy that shop owner. And it took him a while, but he finally assembled this large piece of property. Then he and Hyatt put up this giant hotel and it just sold for $800 million. So that's how I learned about money.